they were looking at the scariest Minecraft myths of all time. And if you make it to the end of this video and find all 10 hidden Harrowbrines, you win. Why is it the nether portals are three blocks tall when Minecraft players are only two blocks tall? So that got me asking, what Minecraft mob is three blocks tall? The Minecraft Enderman. Now, isn't that weird? Oh, almost looks like a perfect door for this old guy, doesn't it? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Are you telling me that the Enderman is the exact same color, purple and black, as the nether portal? Endermen have the exact same particles that the nether portal does. And why is that if they're from the end? Why would they have the exact same connection to this portal, same design, same height, same colors, if they're not from the nether or in some way related? This is getting interesting. Well, according to this website, there's a Minecraft mob called the Netherman. He's an evil henchman of the voice of darkness in the eye of Ender. Basically, it looks like they're trying to take down the entire world. Maybe it's best so we don't see one of these in this video. Are nether portals truly designed for Endermen to use and not for us? Well, never really know the truth, but I think there's enough clues here today to make me a believer. And our next one's in Minecraft Axolotl, one of the most loved mobs in Minecraft, but what if it had a sinister side you didn't know about? Alright, well what if we took a Minecraft Warden and we inverted its color scheme? That happens to look very similar to an Axolotl. Let's compare. Look at this inverted Axolotl. As the colors change, it almost perfectly matches the Warden's color scheme, and it has some of the similar body features, which means pink Axolotls are baby wardens. If you ever played Minecraft before, you probably noticed Minecraft Ancient Debris. It looks a little bit like this, uh, and you might notice, wait a minute, that kind of looks like a tree pattern. It is a tree pattern. Look at that, it's the exact same. Well, let's look at the side. Does it look like bark? Oh, it, oh you know what, it kind of does look like bark. Hold up, Ancient Debris is the same shape, design, and almost the same color as a Minecraft tree, which leads us to have two theories about what Ancient Debris really is. A, Ancient Debris is a ancient pillar from some sort of old structure that was buried underground, but I don't know if I believe that, because wouldn't there be more with it? Why would just the pillars survive? Like, wouldn't there be more? Ancient debris very well may be buried warp stem that has been underground for millions of years. Does that mean that if we were to leave a warp stem here for a really long time, submerged here, it turns into ancient debris as well? Is it possible that the nether used to be just like the overworld, but somehow got corrupted, and the ancient debris that we see is a sign that it used to be full of beautiful life? So I'm gonna show you guys what that might have looked like back in ancient Minecraft. This is what these could have looked like before the nether became corrupted. What turned the wood into this ancient debris material? The pressure? The heat? Combination? We may never know. Now, I told you things were gonna get more scary, and that's exactly what's happening, because our next mystery is about the Ravager. Have you ever noticed how eerily similar to a villager Ravagers look? Not only do they have the same unibrow, the same eye color, the same facial structure, but they also make the same noises. He's literally making a deeper, weird <laughs> sound. Well, one of the theories is that pillagers actually take village prisoners back to their base and then transform them into Ravengers to help fight for them. All right, here is the pillager outpost. We're going in at nighttime to see if we can catch them doing anything, obviously in spectator mode. On the downstairs floor, there's just obviously a couple windows and there's nothing under it. So there's nothing here that shows me how they're turning these villagers into Ravengers. What's strange is there doesn't seem to be any clues as to how they transform the villager into the Ravenger. I mean, this cage though is empty. Wait a minute. This is where they would store the villager to transform it into a Ravenger. The only guess that we can make right now is that their arrows or something in their pocket is full of some poisonous potion that transforms the villagers. And it involves this picture right here. Back in 2010, Minecraft had a Halloween update. And there were two ways to download it, through Notch's blog or automatically downloading it through Minecraft. One player decided he would download it through the blog and he found two files in a random folder. One of them involved really rare audio that's never heard before from a 2010 update. So this clip is the audio he claims to have heard when he downloaded downloaded this. It sounds like some man is crying. <laughs> I don't know what that was, but he said something, possibly in Swedish, but it was 2012. And then that at the end of it. Okay, that, that actually scared me. What the heck was that? But when he listened to the audio, his entire world burst into fire and he took a picture like this. In the official Minecraft Mobs book, they actually include a rare picture of a gas that was never seen before. The picture looked like this. Now this is an official Minecraft handbook. But something about this looks really interesting. Something maybe a little off. The gas looks almost mechanical. Do you see all these weird gears and squares inside of it? Well, in order to test this one, we're gonna spawn a gas and we're first going to look at the outside and see if it looks somewhat mechanical. The tentacles, uh, they do, they definitely have a mechanical vibe to it. Like I could see them like swinging as if they were like on some sort of a pulley and the face also has no emotion as if it's like robotic. So let's go inside of it and see what we see. This one's tough to answer because on the official drawing, there's clearly mechanical parts in it. But when I look at it here, it's literally full of air. It's just purely hollow. So I think a creature like this could never spawn naturally. I think the Minecraft gas was designed by someone to protect the nether because I think they are, or at least they were building an army to attack the overworld. Minecraft mushroom islands really stand out a lot, don't they? Like they just really are super vibrant. They're super rare. They also contain mycelium, 
which doesn't grow anywhere else. They also have mutated mushroom cows. Now, since these biomes are almost always islands, it might be possible they were used by earlier Minecraft civilizations to test nuclear weapons away from the mainland. And the radiation led to the extinction of all mobs and the mutations we see in the grass and the cows today. In fact, the crazy part is that the mushroom theme of these islands could symbolically be related to the mushroom cloud that is formed by nuclear explosions. So first, let's see how far away this is from the mainland, because if it is pretty far away, that kind of supports the theory this was used for weird nuclear tests back in the day. And I literally do not see any other land in sight. I mean, this is absolutely in the middle of nowhere. So I'm setting it to nighttime right now. It's been night for a while and not a single mob has spawned. We're on hard mode, by the way, and it's completely peaceful. Wait a minute, did you guys ever notice my psyllium has like a particle effect? Isn't that curious? Kind of has a radiation feel to it, which means I'm convinced that these were ancient nuclear test sites. There's nothing you can say to convince me otherwise. Minecraft piglins in the nether might have actually created their own obsidian portals in order to explore the overworld. But when they did, they found out that the portals rotted their flesh off their bodies. From there, the zombified piglins then went back to their homeworld and they destroyed the portals on the other side. Here, for example, is a ruined portal in the nether and it's beautifully designed, all right? There was a lot of time put into this build, but notice that there's nothing around here except for a bunch of fire and destruction. So here's some Minecraft piglins. And when these piglins come to the overworld, they appear to be shaking violently. They look like they're vibrating. Something's going on here. And there it is with the skin melting off. It almost seems like the oxygen in the overworld is doing it to them. I would say the answer is yes. Nether portals must have originated in the nether itself, which is why they have the name. Which means maybe the nether was the very first dimension in Minecraft, and the overworld actually came second. Now, one myth that I've always wondered about is who is Herobrine? <laughs> Who is the man that stalks us in caves and finds us wherever we're playing? Some players believe that Herobrine was a player that had an argument with Notch and forever got trapped inside of Minecraft. Now, players believe this is a real human being whose soul is trapped in the game and Notch sucked his eyeballs out so that he can't tell where he is. Others think he never had eyes. Maybe he was an outcast Steve that was blind. Or maybe Herobrine is Notch's son, cast away to live inside of Minecraft for all of eternity. And it would make sense because there's a lot of rage inside of this character. Whenever he sees us, he attacks. Uh, except this one, this one does. He doesn't know I'm back here, I guess. We have gone to the darkest part of the internet to download a file called error. 422.exe. I am terrified to install this on my computer. I'm not even joking. This is actually frightening. We're gonna run error 422.exe. I have. Oh god. <sighs> Guys, welcome to the next myth. But before I show you what this myth even is, I need to explain to you what's going on. Error 422 was a version of Minecraft Mojang created in the early development versions of the game. But they said that it came to life and that it was one of the most horrifying versions ever created. All we can do is survival. Okay, I'm getting a little bit scared right here. The sound is really creepy. We're in. Okay. Error 422 in the top left of the screen. This is pretty crazy right now. Okay. Oh my gosh! There's no head! Okay, this is actually really strange right now. No head, the hotbar's super messed up, the inventory system looks okay. Maybe we'll just get some wood and see what happens, I don't know. Now Mojang said that this version of Minecraft had its own mind, and that what we're playing right now might not even be legal. Okay, sometimes when I click, it doesn't actually work. Obviously, we got some crazy sound problems. Can I do commands? There's no commands. This game mode doesn't even allow you to use cheats at all. There's some sheep. Are these things normal? Hopefully they are. I'm a little bit scared. Okay. That was pretty straightforward. There's no way to sprint. There's no way to see your food. That one's a super dark one. I think that's a shadow. I don't know. Everything's freaking me out right now. Now, one of the scary things about this mode is that there is apparently a new mob called the Screamer. Now, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if this is true. I'm just telling you guys what we researched. And apparently there's a mob called the Screamer that could pop up on you. Whoa! Guys, what is that in the distance? That looks like floating cactuses. What the heck is this? Wow, wow, wow. Look at that. I'm getting chills because I'm a little scared about this because this makes me think that a screamer set this up and I can see below the cactus and it looks like wood. Not just the cactus, but even the dead bushes are floating. So here's the pyramid. Let's go see if we can maybe find some items in here. This is horrifying. There's cactuses in the hole down here. Now this dark hole is not an area that I want to be into. Some bones and flesh. Gold. We've got full gold tools. This feels great. I guess the only thing to do now is go into this cave. Oh, it's very dark in this cave. Let's get some torches. <gasps> Yo, my torch just turned into a skeleton head. That's pretty messed up. After mining for 15 minutes in Era 422, I was unable to find the Screamer. But it doesn't mean he's not real. It doesn't mean that there isn't some cursed mob around waiting to kill you. So there's no way to fly or go in creative mode. So I've been traveling for a long time by foot right now. And so far, it's just an overall creepy environment. Guys, I'm starting to hear some creepy noises now. Do you see the snow just change? Crap, crap. Guys, I'm getting chills. This is actually so scary right now. Guys, do you see that on the hill? What is that? 
What is that? Oh my gosh, she's moving towards us. Oh my gosh, I'm getting- I'm closing, I'm closing. And that wasn't even our scariest myth of the day. All right, back to our ancient structure myth now. If I fly down below the ground, you can see that there are giant mine shafts dug out for these people to mine from. But what's interesting is they never actually collected the ore. In fact, if you fly through these, you're going to find ore everywhere on the side. So what were these people digging for or what were they hiding from? The more you look into this, the creepier it becomes. The more you realize they weren't down here digging for ore at all, but they were down here hiding, hiding from something up above. And that's why when you find hidden minecart chests, those chests contain items because they weren't just down here digging. They were down here living. But we took this even a step further, guys, to get to the bottom of this. If you go into Minecraft story mode, research in the wiki and go to the dark web, you're going to find a website about old builders. And this is a rendering from Mojang as to what the original builders looked like. Interesting. And according to this article, the old builders created everything you see in Minecraft, but it doesn't go on to explain where they ultimately went. But maybe a clue to their whereabouts is back where we started in the desert pyramid. No, I don't know why we're getting lag. What's going on? I didn't even do anything. Guys, I think we're onto something. Because right when I went to teleport to show you what I discovered, the game just crashed. It literally froze out of nowhere. We're gonna get back in there. I'm gonna show you. This is actually big. This is happening live. Whoa. Guys, guys, this actually is like legitimately even creeper right now. I just got chills down my back. Not only did the game just crash, I relaunched it. And now the Mojang launcher says my name. It says lover fella is you. Wait, that's actually like not even part of this video. What's going on with this? This is getting into some dangerous territory here. I'm going to do it anyway. I've got to get through them all to get through the iron door at the end and show you the ultimate secret myth, but this is scary. Look at this logo right here. You ever wonder what that shape was? Well, we did some research and we found that this is called the death ink. This is the necklace that death himself wears around his neck. And apparently it is the most important object in the universe. And yet it happens to be right here on this desert pyramid in the very front in front of us the whole time. Something about this desert pyramid relates to them, but unfortunately we may never know where they went. Our next mystery is through this door. You see, since Minecraft was published, there's been a lot of people trying to crack the secrets of every mob, the Endermen, Villagers, Harrowbrine, and the list goes on. But the biggest question is, who is Steve? Steve is an entity that has access to a catalog with every block in the game. He can break almost everything and kill any creature. We control what happens to him. So who is Steve? Well, when you think about it, we're all Steve. We just have different skins on our Steve. So nothing Steve does is special. He can run, jump, walk, craft potions like a witch, craft items and collect things like a villager. He can fight and kill mobs same way iron golems do, which makes me believe he's just a human. There's nothing special about Steve. But Steve does have a goal, a goal to defeat the Ender Dragon right here. And when he does, there's a message on screen and the message says, it says, I like this player. They don't give up. As if there have been players in the past that did give up. Maybe the ancient builders. But this opens up an entire new possibility. Is Steve just an experiment? Could Steve be an invention from the ancient builders themselves? I mean, what do we know about the previous people before us? The people that started Minecraft? Well, we know that they died. But when we die... We respawn. They didn't respawn. So perhaps there's something watching us as we play the game. Perhaps something put us in Minecraft and gave us the ability to respawn. Because if you couldn't respawn, you couldn't complete the experiment, could you? When you really start to question this stuff, guys, it starts to make you wonder what is going on in this game, who Steve is, why he's been placed here, and is it the ancient builders? Or is it something even more menacing? The end. Now, one thing a lot of us know is that when you kill an Enderman, it drops something. <laughs> There it is. Minecraft Endermen drop ender pearls. But have you ever thought to wonder what an ender pearl is? Because a lot of people think, oh, it's the eye of the Enderman. But guess what, guys? Enderman eyes are purple. So where is this coming from? What part of the Enderman is creating a pearl? Well, I think I can answer that question for you. If we look at Endermen and we look at Minecraft villagers, we notice something about them. They both have a human body shape. So the Endermen are taller. So what if these Endermen are the ancient people we just talked about? <laughs> They got infected by some curse, became Endermen, and the Ender Pearls they're holding are actually pearls they crafted with magic to escape. Now that's just a theory. We can't prove this to you, but we can certainly give you some more evidence this may be the case. You see, we take a look at how vast and expansive the Minecraft world is, and how spread out the structures and villages are, it starts to make you wonder, how did they move so quick if they were ancient people? Maybe the answer is they were using Ender Pearls and it's a lost recipe, those people got infected and now they're Endermen. Now, this article right here details everything that's ever been known about the White Enderman. It was discovered over six years ago in Minecraft, and they say it was found near the end portal. But things got even more interesting when PewDiePie showed one in his gameplay. Did you see that? Right there in the background looks exactly like a White Enderman sneaking up on him in his video. Now, this is creepy. So there's one test I need to do to see if maybe we can spawn it by ourselves. 
So guys, here we are in a brand new Minecraft world with zero resource packs and zero mods on. Here I have a command block preloaded with a Minecraft summon command, and we're going to try to literally spawn thousands of Endermen to see if any of them come out white. And now, here's infinite Endermans. So I'm going to zoom out so we don't absolutely destroy our ears right here, and we're going to see how many of them it takes, if any, become white. 500 Endermen have been spawned, and I don't see a single one that looks white to me. We will go until the literal server crashes because I need to know the truth today. So guys, with literally 700, and that's a minimum, by the way, because multiples have TP'd away. So guys, we're now at 1,000 Endermen spawned, and this is an insane amount of Endermen, and, and I don't see a white Enderman anywhere here. I've got one more thing I want to try, and that's by interviewing someone who claims to have seen one of these themselves. I really saw it with my own eyes the white Enderman is real. I literally saw it myself by the end portal. So it sounds to me like maybe the best area for us to determine if this white Enderman is real is to go right to an end portal and see what we can find. So guys, here is the Wikipedia article about it. And this guy also says, I intended to find a stronghold. And after searching for an hour, I finally found one. He says he thought he heard an Enderman die. When he went to the sound, he saw a white Enderman with blinding white skin and green eyes with green particles. All right, guys, so we're going to really slow things down right now because we need to get extremely focused. These are rarely caught on camera, if ever. And if we're going to be the one to identify them today and show that they're real, we got to play it carefully. All right, guys, so we've been flying around for a couple minutes here trying to get these to spawn. And we got our first Enderman right there in the distance. So these first two Endermen don't really seem to be doing anything. They're just standing there. They're normal looking. So I think we need to try to get them to jump into lava and see if that makes the elusive white Enderman. So this is the stronghold right here. We're going to try to just spawn the Enderman down and get them into it and see if that does anything. That did not work. If we light this, will it send them right to the end? Or will it work? Sends them right to the end. What if we break it and do it in the middle? They're still being sent. After placing hundreds of Endermen inside of the lava portal, not a single one turned into a white Enderman. So I felt that it was time to conclude this and move on to the next Minecraft mystery. And when I was replaying my footage, I saw this in the back of one of my shots. Could this be the elusive white Minecraft Enderman? Unfortunately for us, it's too hard to tell from this shot. So I'll let you decide, is it real or is that just a skeleton in the distance? If you had a pet for over a thousand days, does he die when you die? Or does he go on to live his own life in Minecraft? Now, in order to find out what happens to our Minecraft pets, I've got to start a brand new hardcore world and go get a pet. So here we are in hardcore mode. I guess the easiest pet to get would probably be a dog or a parrot, but we're kind of on an island here, so I hope there's a dog. I spawned in the middle of the ocean on our hardcore world, so I only had one choice, and that was to place a boat down and literally ride into the great unknown. But I had to know the truth. What was really going on with the millions and millions of animals that can never be visited again? Guys, it's honestly like kind of creepy to be out here like in the middle of the ocean in hardcore. Like you can't see what's around you. You just don't know. Like this stuff could be real. Well, guys, just like that in our new hardcore world, in, in probably 45 minutes later, I found something I can tame. So this is my pet horse. I can't ride the horse, but he is my pet. And that's what we're here to test today, to see what happens to this guy when we die. But before we kill him, we need to become best friends with him. So enjoy this three-second montage of us frolicking, enjoying life together. I love you so much, buddy. You're the best horse that could ever be here. Hey, man, I know times are tough, but I don't have any apples, but I bought you a flower. I hope that's enough for today. Hey, what's up, Bessie? I got great news. Look at this. I have enough wood to make some tools. We're gonna Bessie, I love you. I'm going to go to the village and get us a saddle. I'll be back in a few weeks. Bessie, I'm back and I brought you some apples. We're going to be okay, Bessie. Here you go. I'm going to go to a mine shaft, Bessie, and I'm going to find us a saddle. Bessie, I found a, I found a mine shaft. Bessie, we're going to make it. We're going to be okay, Bessie. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh my gosh. No, stop. I got to get back to Bessie. No, please stop. No. No. Oh my gosh. I can't believe this just happened. Bessie's never gonna see us again, but at least we can see her after taking an emotional moment to get ourselves back together. And if I remember the last time I saw Bessie was on top of this hill. So we're gonna go back to this hill and there she is, right where we left her, waiting on us to come back. Maybe they might be wondering, did they abandon me? Did they, did they not like me? They might be thinking, am I not good enough? Those thoughts may be running through Bessie's head right now. And even though that's horrible, at least Bessie has freedom, guys. At least Bessie is not trapped inside of a cage. I was smart enough to not do that. And I'm thankful for the memories that we did have together, guys. So what happens if you fall into the void with unlimited totems of undying in Minecraft? Could you theoretically live in the void and survive in a brand new region that's never been explored? So guys, this is the end. Is Wait a minute. Is that a white Enderman? If you guys look right there, I just swear I saw something peek up. 
Guys, I don't know if this game's teasing us right now or what's going on. But this is the end, and this is an entire inventory full of totems of undying. So theoretically, they would keep triggering forever, creating an infinite loop of life. And if I stay in creative mode or continue to give them to myself, does that mean we can literally glitch the game out and enter a new biome? So here we are in survival mode, guys, and I don't want to die. I guess without any further ado, it's time to jump into the void and see what happens. Into the void we go. We're starting to take some damage. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, it didn't even trigger one of them. It didn't even give me a chance for this to work. So in order to really put this one to the test, we're now going to do it in the overworld to see if there's any difference here. Here's jumping into a new dimension. Wish me luck. And there goes everything we've ever known. Health is slowly dropping. It's looking okay here. And boom, it's an instant death. Can you actually make a perfect circle in Minecraft without any mods? Because according to this video with over 15 million views, uh, you can't. So by using a command block and using some insane commands, this player Mystic Cat has come up with a way to literally create a perfect infinite circle and it looks like it might break the game. Now the first command is this, and that's the second one. So I guess they're on screen here, we, we took them from his comments. I don't know if I did this right, I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. Now what, I mean, do I use a lever or something? Like is this pop, is this it? I feel like this isn't it. Okay, well that, that didn't work. Yo, I don't know what I don't know what's going on here, guys. This is like the most intense redstone thing your boy's ever seen in his life. So that's like literally every command in the description. I have no idea what's about to happen, but I have a feeling it's not going to do anything. Hey, let's find out though. Okay, impulse repair. Oh god, I did the whole thing backwards. That's why it's not working, guys. I literally just spent 30 minutes building it backwards. All right, now that we've done it, maybe the right direction. Now we're going to try it again. Pull this lever. Okay, well that's not good. Um. Interesting. Now we're gonna push this button. Oh, oh, ladies and gentlemen, we made a circle. Finally, all I had to do was turn them to always active. And now I think I pushed this button and oh, I need that to stop. And this button like smooths it out. So I mean, it does answer the question of whether or not you can make the elusive cursed circle Minecraft item. For years, people like me have clickbaited you with images of mega end portals. But is there actually some proof behind these? Is it possible that a mega end portal exists? With the help of a custom world, I was able to create an entire universe where every single block was obsidian. And this is where we were able to test the massive nether portal theory. Man, I really just made an entire world for it to be covered in snow. That actually just happened, didn't it? Why would I not have guessed it? Okay. After creating the world, I had the world edit out over 2.1 million blocks of Minecraft. And honestly, I didn't even think this was going to work. So now that we've created a giant hole from world height all the way down to the bottom of the world, we're going to indent it by just one and see if this allows us to light the portal. If this works, my mind is going to be absolutely blown. The absolute size this is going to turn out is just unfathomable to me. I mean, I can't even see the top of this still. I am unbelievably impressed that my computer could even do this. But doing that was the least of my concerns because as time went on, the world became laggier and laggier. If I wanted to do this before the entire world crashed, I had to do it now. Guys, we're trying to get a placement in right here, but I can't even see it. It's so dark right now. Oh my gosh, here we go, here we go. The light just came. The internal shape now is taking place. Now all we have to do is get this flint and steel ignited before time runs out and the server goes down because the lag is getting severe. We are down to like two FPS. This is it, the, the moment of truth. Now I don't know if the water's gonna cause issues. Let's try it with the water. That didn't work, we're gonna have to drain the water. Oh no. Guys, the water and lava destroyed part of the portal here. There's still a little more water over here and then we can test what may be the world's biggest nether portal ever created. Now as far as I can tell, everything's set up and ready to go, so let's give it a light. Still no. What's the problem now? So guys, even though there's a border around the entire thing, it doesn't look like we can actually make the world's largest nether portal. Another great question someone had is, what happens if you delete every single texture inside of Minecraft? And I mean literally every single texture. Well, we're gonna find out right now. So early on, you still got the background, so that's pretty good news. So guys, this is about to blow your minds. But after removing every single texture in the game, this is what the game looks like. And it allows you to see more than I think what Mojang may have intended when they released the game. Literally everything's gone. You can see through the entire world. Apparently water stayed and so did caves, which is interesting. And so did some of the new blocks. What's interesting about this is it might allow you to get x-ray vision without ever installing any cheats or hacks. Problem is, it didn't really work, actually. No, like it actually didn't work. Check it out. Yeah, so actually I installed a mod to just kind of see what it would look like, but seems like if you remove the texture, somehow Minecraft still plays with texture. What do you guys think? Could you beat the game like this? I don't think I could. Now, one of the scariest Minecraft unsolved mysteries is the giant Alex that you can see right here. One Minecraft streamer claims that using 1.12 in this specific seed is the only world where you can find this mob, and it's the size of a giant, but all it does is stalk you. 
All right, guys, this might be one of the scariest ones we've looked at yet today. This is the Minecraft seed we're supposed to use to find it, which is very, very specific. The skin is just absolutely horrifying. So I'm feeling a little bit creeped out already and I can feel the chills. One thing this article says is that giant Alex leaves giant holes in the ground that are four by three, like giant footsteps. But there's some other things apparently that need done to find this. Difficulty must be set to peaceful and the fog distance must be 0.2. So guys, it says you need to head towards the mainland off of this island and you should find this giant cursed Alex. So I would assume that means this land over here. So we're going to slowly approach right now and see if anything shows up. And there is no village here. We're gonna take it really slow, guys. I'm not trying to scare you guys. I know this could be creepy if this is real. So far looking good, I don't see it, I don't see it. That's definitely the mainland right there. So because this mob can walk around, we need to look around this mainland and see if we can find any giant footsteps. Now guys, I don't know about you, but this looks suspiciously like two giant feet to me. It could be natural, but that looks really weird. Some pumpkins over there. I mean, it's definitely creepy. Like, I, I just, I don't know, man. Like, there's these holes just everywhere, and I can't, like, sure, they could be caves, but if this giant Alex thing is real, you'd think we'd see it. So guys, I have been exploring throughout the entire night, walking around this entire map, and I've seen footprints, I've seen caves, I've seen things that look like a giant, but I have not seen the giant Alex. Now guys, before I show you the scariest Minecraft myth, I must warn you that what I'm about to share with you is literally terrifying. This is the Minecraft thing. Apparently, this is an AI intelligent living being that lives in Minecraft inside of some world called the Freak World. And there's a secret pin that allows you to gain access to the world, but sometimes things don't always happen like you want them to. But what's crazy is people say the thing doesn't attack them, it tries to communicate with them. Now you can see guys here, the seed is 2323. Three, two, three. So far, things look good. So one of the best ways to see the thing is apparently to travel alone into the forest. So we're gonna slowly move in here and see if we can spot the thing. Because if this thing's real. <gasps> There's a sheep. Okay, I thought that was actually the thing. My heart actually stopped. It's getting really dark right here. All right, we're gonna go in. Let's get in here. Do you hear those footsteps? Is that a bridge? <gasps> Did you guys see that? Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I don't know if you guys just saw that. Was that the thing? I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I'm gonna delete this world though. Some people said this could infect your computer if it was real. And if we choose to believe that these were built by ancient humans like the Minecraft lore suggests, then that brings up the next question, gamers. Where are they now? Where did they go? Are they dead or are they zombies? I don't know if they're zombies. But that is a genuine question. If they built all these structures, if they created libraries full of knowledge and books that we can't use, where are they? I genuinely cannot find any info on this. So work with me in the comments below to help me answer this mystery. Oh, is that Herobrine? No, it's just Bruh. Steve, guys. But we all know who Herobrine is. Some believe he's real, some believe he's not real. But what if I told you there's something even crazier than Herobrine in Minecraft? And that would be Entity 303. The first sighting is to believe to be caught right here in this video from 2017 by a player named Cop4 Terminator TM. So as he begins to play, there's some very crazy chat going on, talking about how weird they feel, how they're being stopped. You can see there appears to be no mods on, but there's netherite, like stacks of fire. There's also bedrock and a sign, and it just says null. Now to me, that's weird, because if I came up with this by myself and faked it, I wouldn't write the word null. I see that black thing again, he says. He says he sees the black thing again. We don't know what he's talking about. He says lay. He says, dude, his friend's gone. His friend just left the game. So now he's literally alone. We don't know what's happening. There's a giant thing around him. We can't figure out what's going on right now. Suddenly they start getting some lag spikes. And then as he's eating his meat, he looks off into the distance and there it is. Just kidding. There it is. A black entity in the distance looking at him. Now this is fascinating because some people think that Endermen are actually people trapped inside of Minecraft because they say things, they say human words. Now, obviously you might be thinking, Zachary, this is clearly fake. No one actually made this happen. But what if it wasn't? According to my research, Entity 303 is a fired Minecraft employee that tried to come back with a bunch of people that hated Notch to destroy the game. And apparently, Herobrine was here to warn us about Entity 303. So guys, there's only one way to test if this is real. And that is to replicate the exact same steps these players went through to see if anything happens. So what we're gonna do is dig down. We're already on their seed, just a few blocks. So we're gonna take it down nice and slow, guys. And we're gonna see if anything starts to pop up here. So far, it seems okay. So far, so good. All right, guys, so I don't know how to spawn him. I've never seen anything like this. It could be real, it could be literally fake, but hey, did I scare you? I bet I did. 
Now, earlier on, I mentioned that the structures in the game might have been created by an ancient civilization. And I asked the question, but what happened to them? Because there's no way this is the civilization, right? They wouldn't just have created pyramids and moved on to create these ugly little dirt houses. So where are they? And lucky for you, I think I finally found the answer. Minecraft is full of zombies. Zombies don't really make sense, do they? Unless these zombies used to be Steve, guys. If you pay attention, you might have noticed that zombies are wearing the exact same outfit that Steve wears. You wouldn't happen to think that maybe a zombie infected the entire civilization and created blood-hungry zombies to kill them. And maybe the only surviving people hid their best items in loot around the world just in case anyone survived so they can reclaim their items. Wouldn't it make sense for the villagers to be terrified of zombies like they are because they know they're going to be hunted down? I believe that villagers are the descendants of the surviving people of the ancient Minecraft civilization. And the zombies are the descendants of the ones that were infected. The reason they have villages now instead of giant buildings is because it's all they can build with their limited resources and their fear. So next time you see a zombie, why don't you ask yourself, is that really a zombie? Or is that Steve? Now for this next one, I'm gonna pass it off to my shorts channel where I reveal to you what may be the biggest Minecraft secret of all time. Minecraft ghasts are secretly a victim in Minecraft. And I'm gonna tell you why, because this is the biggest Minecraft conspiracy you've ever heard. Let me explain this one, guys. Starting with the gas model. They're always frowning and crying for what seems like no reason. But what if there was a reason? There's a noise they make. Every time we hit them, we know that they cry and scream, but why would they be crying if they were happy ghosts? Well, let's dig even further. Does it drop something wholesome like gold or helpful like some kind of meat you can eat? No, they literally drop gas tea. Well, the achievement Uneasy Alliance actually states you need to rescue a ghast from the nether, bring it safely home to the overworld, and then kill it. Something brought them there, and now they're trying to kill you and they're crying every single day because they can't get out. The next mystery is what happens if you stare into one of these sneaky boy's eyeballs forever? There are real theories out there that one of these could actually hypnotize you and take you over in real life. I'm not really sure. That sounds kind of crazy to me. So we're going to do it in creative mode, and we're literally just going to stare at these guys and... Can you chill? So we're going to see how long we can stare at one of these, and we're going to see what type of stuff begins. Here we go. Now freeze it. Freeze it right there. Freeze the image. If you guys look at the image of the Enderman, the way its head lifts off, it looks suspiciously like a shulker box. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the truth of Enderman. If we travel to the home of Enderman, you can see that they're all surrounding the dragon, and this is what their view looks like. Like, when you take it over, this is what they see. So what are they? Enderman are lost souls that the dragon has brainwashed. They have no free will. The only thing they can do is kill others, but they can't kill what they can't see, which is why they can only see you when they look at you. They're almost blind, but when they make eye contact, the theory is, they can see your soul, and that's why they attack. Endermen are literally slaves to the Ender Dragon, but here's where it gets even crazier. I wonder why they pick up blocks. It's because there's a little bit of human left in them. That building instinct is still there, and that is why Endermen are one of the saddest mobs in Minecraft. Now, going back to the story of villagers versus illagers, why do they actually hate each other so much? Now, it might seem pretty, pretty obvious. I mean, these, they obviously kill each other, and it's a good reason to hate someone if they come and kill you all, right? But why did that start in the first place? Well, there's actually a real reason, but first, we have to compare these two to show you the difference. That is an illager, and that is a villager. What's the difference? Literally just basically nothing. They look almost the same. They dress the same. They look really similar. One's gray, one's not gray. Well, according to Jeb himself, one of the original workers on Minecraft, the illagers became corrupted, and that is why they were exiled from the Minecraft villages. So these are villagers, but they're villagers that somehow became evil. And when we consider the fact that villagers are completely passive, they literally don't fight back. Look at this little stupid guy. Just run in a circle. Do something. Throw a punch. Anything. They don't. What if that is one of the reasons they had to be cast out? Because they literally just kept fighting anything that was innocent. So these guys are mutant villagers that escaped the village and now they want blood. Now guys, one of my favorite mysteries is that clicking noise. Do you hear that whenever you're in the basalt deltas in Minecraft? Now that clicking noise sounds exactly like the clicking noise a Geiger counter makes, which measures radiation. So somehow this land is radioactive, but we don't know how. You can see like volcanic ash in the sky. It could be some form of plutonium or uranium or some sort of super radioactive material that's found here in the basalt mines, but it makes you wonder why this area is radioactive in the first place. Why was it radioactive thousands of years ago? What was going on here? Is that where the pigmen came from? Are these pigmen real pigs that were hit by some sort of radiation that then turned them in to mutated pigmen zombies. Could the nether just be a world that was hit by a nuclear bomb and this is what's left? We may never know. Now guys, here's the next question. Is this music disc the only broken music disc in Minecraft? Give this a listen and tell me what does it sound like to you? Sounds like some running. Sounds like some panting. Some beast in the background getting closer. And closer, and then static. 
some monsters back there. Listen to that. Sounds like a laugh at the very end of the track. And then a cough. And there's a book. Some sort of a book being flipped through. What could that be? Sounds like a heartbeat. Uh-oh. More running. Lots of running. Here comes the digging. And then it just stops. Okay, now I'm gonna stop it there. But this disc is fascinating, gamers. Because take a look. It's the only broken disc in the game. It features a human running. It cuts off at the end. Clearly there's a book in there. Now some people think it might be Herobrine chasing a player. But I think I have the real theory. You know that sound when you look into an Enderman's eyes? In survival mode? To me, that sound sounds very similar to what we just heard in this disc. I believe a player was mining, tried to run away, and got captured by the Enderman when the disc died. So do you guys think it's possible that a player recorded himself being killed by an Enderman in the caves? Or do you think it was something even more sinister? I think it's pretty clear that the sound of this disc right here is the sound of a player dying on tape to an Enderman. Our next unsolved mystery involves the Ender Dragon, and this one is really crazy. The Ender Dragon guards the end from the player. He doesn't allow you to get to the end cities or see all the treasures and loot it has, unless you kill the dragon. But what if you took the dragon and moved it to the nether? Would she even spawn there? Would she destroy the world? Would she protect something else? As far as we know, nobody's ever been able to move the end dragon to the nether until today. Oh, oh. I swear I just saw another white Enderman in these videos, man. I feel like every time I do it, they're haunting me. We can create a mega super nether portal. And then, if the dragon flies through this portal, he should be transferred into the nether. Flies around the thing? Come on now. There's no way he avoids it, right? Is he too smart? Does he not realize? We're gonna seal it off right here. We're gonna give it a big wall. That way he has to go through it. There's no way out. Here we go. Portal's now placed in multiple locations. Here we go. Oh, he breaks it. Oh my gosh, so there's no way to send him to the nether. So we need to spawn a dragon in the nether then and see what happens. The end dragon is now in the nether. We have spawned him in here. But so far, he's literally just going crazy. I don't think he knows what he wants to do. Interestingly, he doesn't seem to want to attack mobs. He doesn't seem to want to break anything. He just flies in a circle. I think we got to the bottom of this one pretty quickly. It seems like he just acts like a normal dragon. I just don't think he wants to be here because it's not his home. Have you ever wondered who created the Minecraft strongholds or where ruined portals come from? So have I. Because when you think about it, why is the end portal shut off? Why are ruined nether portals a thing? Someone destroyed these portals and doesn't want you getting to other dimensions. Now, after thinking about it, I think I came up with the correct theory. Back before Minecraft was out, all the dimensions lived in harmony. They all worked together and they loved each other. They could visit, come and go whenever they pleased. But then something happened. A massive war broke out and thousands were slaughtered, which explains the bones you find in every single dimension. And after the war, years of decay happened. And that's what made all the portals become ruined and the end portal become broken. And when we're brought into the world, we have to relight those portals, enter the dimension, and then resave everything. This is why all the mobs in new dimensions are mad when we go in, because they weren't meant to be there in the first place. They've been trapped for centuries. So after we slay the dragon, we get to see what life was like before. We get to see all the cities filled with loot and what was once a great civilization that was destroyed by a giant war. For example, take a look at this ruined portal inside the nether itself. This is built with craftsmanship. Someone with skill was here, and they were using it to get back to the surface. But unfortunately, it's been destroyed. Maybe this was the home of who lived in the nether, and maybe the victors were the ones in the end, and that's why the end cities are still intact. It all makes sense. Now, have you guys ever created an iron golem and then left it outside to protect you? Probably yes. Well, this player did the exact same thing as you, except he woke up to a very different outcome than most. When he summoned an iron golem to take care of a couple zombies around the base, but then when he went to sleep, they awoke, and the iron golem was gone. Now, they assumed it was died and they kept playing their game, but slowly they noticed a trail of poppies surrounding their base. It was leading to random parts of the world. They had blank signs they didn't place surrounded and slowly they started to see out of the corner of their eye, this red golem. A lot of people assumed they were sleep deprived and thought nothing much of it. But this my friends is called the blood golem. This is the most dangerous Minecraft mystery because if it's real, it infects your computer with a virus and destroys all of your files. So we're in game right now. We're gonna try to summon a golem right now and see if it comes out normal or what happens. So in order to see if we can spawn this one, we're gonna get some poppies, right? We're gonna get some red poppies and put these in the ground to see if we can attract one into our base right here. Wait, guys, I was trying to build a golem and it didn't even work. Why is this not working? 
That should have made a golem, right? Am I stupid? Like, this should have made a golem. Yo, this is getting kind of creepy right now. I'm on easy. I'm still not spawning. What's going on here? Maybe I need to place some more poppies down. Like, I don't really know what's going on. Let's go ahead and do a few more. So, guys, I put poppies down right here on screen. I, 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 my golem's not spawning. I can't get this thing to come into my world. So, frankly, I don't know. Maybe it's myth busted. I mean, these things are creepy, right? So, anyway, I, I don't see it anywhere. So, the nether is like Minecraft's hell, right? It's like the bad space in Minecraft, right? That's kind of what it's representing. You would think... That's like the bottom of the world. But what if you manage to fall into the void in the nether? Okay, so guys, now we're in the nether and we're gonna figure out what's below it. So I just need to find a nice spot to dig down and hopefully I don't fall into lava. Now I wanna show you guys something fascinating. When you break through the bottom layer of bedrock, it's red. It's not the same color as a normal void. This is not how it normally looks. But look at this, look at this, ready? Right as we go into it, it changes to pitch black. There is a moment where it changes color. And what's even crazier is if we fly and change biome, the color changes as well. So guys, take a look at how creepy this is. We're underneath the nether right now. This is the void. And if we fly slowly, it slowly becomes pink and then red. And by the end of it, this is literally the color of blood. Let's jump down there and see what happens. Oh God, the black is freaky. The way it changes color is frightening. I don't see, oh, I, I didn't see anything. It went pure black and that's what scares me. Because what if there is something down there and we just can't see it because it's too black to see? Green Steve, have you ever heard of it? Probably not. That's because it's one of Minecraft's biggest mysteries. You guys know that feeling where like there's a pair of eyes watching you in game? Like you know something's watching you, but you just don't know where. Well, you might've been experiencing a stalking from Green Steve. This Steve doesn't do a lot of damage to you. The goal of this Steve is only to make you feel watched. Here we are inside of a new desert biome, guys. And we're going to see if we can find the feeling of stalking Green Steve. Now we're waiting for, there it is. I feel it. Someone's watching me. I literally feel it right now. Like it just, like you know the feeling. Like someone's watching me. They could be watching you too. Now, the reason we want to look in a desert is because he spawns here because he blends into the cactuses. So we're going to keep looking. Wait a minute. Is that Green Steve's in the village? That's a Green Steve, isn't it? What is that? <gasps> There's one right there. Oh my gosh. We got to get out of here. Wait, these, hold on. These things don't attack us, right? They just stalk you. This thing's looking right at us. We're going to try to sneak up. We're going to play it really carefully. There's a whole bunch of them in this village. Let's go see if we can get a look at the village. Currently, it is sunset. I'm looking into the Green Steve base, and I swear that I see a red golem head popping up right now. Like, I don't know if you see that, but if that's actually a red golem head, that looks like a red golem head. If that's actually a red golem head and it's a virus, a blood golem, I don't know what could happen. I'm going to disconnect, though. I'm not sure what we saw, but I didn't like it. Have you guys seen the message, you cannot rest while mobs are nearby? Well, what if you could rest when mobs were nearby? What would actually happen? Would they kill you? Would they eat you? Would zombies bite you and you become a zombie? This message is super common by almost everyone who plays the game. So what would actually happen if we could sleep when monsters were nearby? Well, we don't know for sure if it's even possible to do, but we have a theory that we found a way to sleep when mobs are nearby. And that is using mob spawn eggs and a redstone repeater. The theory is that redstone mob eggs will not trigger the message. And then we can sleep near a bunch of creepers and see what happens. So we're gonna go ahead and place this down right now and hook it up to an infinite redstone clock. All right, clock is lit. Now it's triggering this. Now all we need to do is put a little barrier up so they can't blow us up. They can be near us, but they won't kill us. We're gonna go ahead and put the creepers in right now and see what happens. Time set night in three, two, one. <gasps> it's working. I can't believe this is actually working. Where's it gonna take us? What's gonna happen? Guys, we're waking up. <gasps> Wait a minute. What is this? I can't move. Why is everything green? These creepers aren't exploding. What's going on? Did I just become a creeper? Yo, we're actually a creeper. This is insane. I didn't know this would happen if you sleep by them. I guess that's why you can't sleep near freaking mobs, dude. That's horrifying. Oh my gosh, are they see in pixels? This is crazy. I had no idea this was a thing. Now guys, just like end cities, the nether fortresses were supposed to be a place for us all to live in. But what's clear is that the loot left inside the chest of the fortress maybe was left as a gift or spare supplies. Either way, guys, it seems like we've been there at some point in time. But now it's been left, it's been abandoned, and there's loot everywhere. Do you ever feel like Minecraft is listening to you? Your phone listens to you. We all know it does. So does Minecraft. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to dig straight down in this hole that I'm in right now. And I'm going to just look for diamonds. And if I find any diamonds that I really need or I'm going to quit... Hello? We found gold and that's not that un- Oh my god, we got diamonds on the first time! Just one? That's even more unusual. I, I don't know how often I've seen a one diamond vein. Like, this is so unbelievably weird. Just to prove that I did not even set this up, we have a replay mod shot fast forwarding right now on screen of every activity I've did since I came on the server. Okay, it worked once, and I'm gonna be honest with you, I, I have a hard time believing that was not actually real. Like, I'm gonna have to go ahead and give this first conspiracy theory a possible thumbs up. Minecraft 
Villagers. Is it possible that these cute little dumb Minecraft villagers are actually sentient beings? What I mean is, are they able of free will and thinking? Are they pretending to be idiots, but in reality, they were coded to be the world's first sentient AI? How often have you sat and watched villager paths? They seem to walk around all day around random paths and just do stupid stuff like walk into a corner. If you're trying to pretend you're an NPC, you're not going to walk like a normal person. You're going to do something like this. Something just like you're doing there, my boy. Isn't that right? Oh, 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 don't look at me. So guys, we're now in spectator mode. We are undercover and the villagers should theoretically have no idea that we're actually watching them. He opened a door and closed it, just seemingly very unintelligent. He just is repeating this over and over. Look at this all day. He's going to do it. Why would they make a villager open and close a door on himself like that? You know, do they have free will? It's possible. What if Minecraft's a post-apocalyptic simulation? And the first example is your character. You are the only human. You don't ever walk by other players unless there are other Steves or other players that join. You're like, Zach, okay, it's it's a one-player game. That's why there's only one Steve. Okay, you're right. But tell me this. Tell me why when you walk around at night instead of difficulty in easy mode, there are literal zombies that spawn in the world. Or what about the fact that there are abandoned villages in Minecraft? You see, abandoned villages are another indicator that maybe something went wrong. And you combine all three of these together and you start thinking, wait a minute, Zach. You're actually onto something. You might be right. Now, do I believe that theory is true? Absolutely, kind of. Okay, on one hand, I think it's just video game design. On the other hand, that's a lot of really good points. Let me ask you guys a question about Minecraft glow squids. How many of you actually wanted this in the game? Have you guys ever wondered if these were actually real fair votes? In 2020, the vote was for a moo bloom, a glow squid, and an ice illager. And somehow the glow squid won, a squid that really contributes nothing to the game. Now this video later come out and said, here's the mob vote. You can vote for them, right? Here's all the cool examples, the ice illager, the the Moo Bloom, and they go on to say who won. But let's take a look at how happy the comments are. Nobody seemed to want the Glow Squid, but yet somehow it won. One theory, maybe a YouTuber by the name of Dream told his fans to vote for it and had so many fans at the time he was able to manipulate the vote. Some people think that's clearly the case. He did actually make a tweet. It might have impacted the results, but in order to really test this, I'm going to see what players actually think. I'm just going to give an honest question to players on my Minecraft server, play.loverfella.com, the world's greatest Minecraft server. I said, I have a question. Which mob is cooler, Moo Bloom, Ice Illager, or Glow Squid? Let's see what they say. Ice Illager, Ice Illager, Moo Bloom, Moo Bloom, Moo Bloom, Ice Illager. Moo Bloom, Ice Ice Moo. It is absolutely astonishing how few glow squids I see. Are diamonds useless in Minecraft? This conspiracy theory states that diamonds are as useless as wood. So if we highlight it, they both do seven attack damage. The only difference is the diamond sword attacks a little bit faster. I want to see if these axes are actually as good as diamond swords. First thing we're going to do is we're going to test the diamond sword and diamond axe against a regular zombie. One, two, three. Three hits from that. One, two, three so exact same but it did take twice as long due to the twice as big cooldown on the axe that's pretty interesting but why would anyone ever get a wooden sword then over this is the sword better so that took six hits but each hit was a little bit faster so you can now see exactly how weak a diamond is compared to a wooden sword or a wooden axe let's try conspiracy theory in a different dimension let's take a look at the zombie pigments do you ever wonder where they came from why are these even in the game the theory is these zombie pigments used to be regular pigs and were mutated maybe through radiation or some great war they then attacked the villagers and the villager iron golems are what protected them and banished the piglins to the nether it's possible that these giant fortresses you see in here are literally preparing for war against against the villagers. This is clearly designed for defense, right? So there's a pretty easy way to test this conspiracy. And although we'll never really know the truth until Mojang releases an update to show us that maybe there is a war, I got two other things to show you that might convince you it is. Number one, let's put a villager here and see what happens. That's interesting. There's actually no fighting. I'll be honest, I am surprised, but Minecraft's newest game just had a trailer, and this game trailer is a little different than what we just saw there. Take a look at some of the interesting parts. You can see there's villagers hanging out inside of a village like normal, showing possible sentience by reading a book. But look at this. Did you see that in the background right there, guys? I want to replay that again right there for you. These appear to be zombies hanging out with the villagers happily. So this really makes it look like the piglins are preparing for some sort of 
war on the villagers. And here in this shot, we see every single Minecraft mob teaming up with the villagers to defend against the piglins, which further reinforces the theory that some sort of great battle took place. The only question I have is why they're not attacking yet. And I really don't know. Maybe there's some peace treaty or truce. And I think we're going to see that in future games. Netherrack is made of flesh. Let me explain. Do you notice the weird red color to it? Do you ever wonder why? Do you think it's lava? Maybe this has got lava in it. The answer is probably no, because if it was lava, it'd probably look more like the magma cube, right? It's a different color red. If you look at that red and that red, these are different. This is more of a blood color. Now, why is that? Well, if you look here, the original name for netherrack was Bloodstone, which would make sense because it does have the same texture as cobblestone. You can see side by side, they have the same pattern, shapes and everything, but it's basically just drenched in blood. Do I believe this theory? Yeah, I do. I think the fact that it was originally named like Bloodstone and we already have soul. Minecraft wandering traders are very interesting creatures. But are wandering traders simply exiled villagers? Maybe villagers that showed their sentience and had to leave because they were too smart? Well, first off, they're they're very similar. They're the only other creature you can trade with that is wild. The only way they can survive is using the invisibility potion, and I think their only solution is to wait for a player to come around, give you whatever trades that they think you might want. That way you go to the village, slaughter them, and the wandering trader could return home where he belongs. Super sketchy theory. But when you start to dig a little deeper and ask some more questions about Endermen, you start to wonder, why do they get harmed by water? Why can they teleport? Why do they hate being stared at? Why do they see the world in inverted colors? Before I can share with you what the theory is, we have to go find some chorus fruit. Now, we've all used chorus fruit before. When you take a chorus fruit, it actually allows you to teleport, just like the Endermen, with the exact same noise. So the theory that the commenter left in the video is that these Endermen became addicted to eating chorus fruit inside of the end, and the chorus fruit managed to corrupt their bodies and turn them into cursed alien beings. Gained the ability to teleport, but lost the ability to do things like swim in water. Have you ever wondered why they see inverted? Could it be a side effect from all the chorus fruit they've been eating? That is why they don't like being stared at, because they're ashamed of what they've done. Everything lines up in this one, and I am confident to say Endermen are corrupted humans. They literally ate too much fruit and turned into a monster. Speaking of monster, let's take a trip to Minecraft's newest and scariest monster. You see, if you travel to the deepest depths in Minecraft, you'll discover a monster called the Warden. The theory is that the Warden used to live on the surface and be a regular creature, but something happened to cause him to get banished to the underworld where he has lived for the last couple of thousand years. But because it's so dark down here and there's so little light, he lost the ability to see and evolved the ability to feel vibrations. And that is how the Warden roams the halls down here. But the question is, why? What really stands out to me is that his heart is beating consistently and it's beating outside of his body. This being the only mob that has a heart leads me to believe that it is possible that this mob maybe had too much influence on the surface and too much knowledge and something even more powerful banished him down here. You see, according to this commenter, that's not actually a beating heart, but it's actually a collection of souls inside of the warden's chest. Let's listen to the warden sounds closer. Now, do you guys think the warden itself is making these noises? Or do you think these noises are coming from the souls trapped inside of its chest? Brandon Pierce, who is a Minecraft developer, said the souls in his chest were extremely important. And he says that the warden is inspired by the monster heard at the end of Music Disc 11. This is confirmed to be part of the lore for where the warden came from. Here's the running. There is the end. But the original warden, which looked like this, was even more disturbing than the one that we see now today, which makes me wonder if this monster we see right here was the monster that banished the warden, and maybe we're gonna see this in a future Minecraft update. Is it possible that Minecraft wasn't originally meant to be a block harvesting game? Is it possible that it was originally meant to be a true horror game? I mean, think about it. Last time we talked about how Netherrack used to be flesh themed. There's Harrowbrine, there's Nether, which is literally an evil region. There's so many creepy achievements in the game. Is it possible that Notch originally wanted Minecraft to be a horror game? When you look at all the items in here, the warden, the deep dark items, the blood, all of this stuff starts to show that it's actually becoming that scary game. Maybe Mojang originally intended. I mean, come on, that's scary. 
this block is scary. The ghast is scary. When you start to think about all the things Minecraft has, it's actually got quite a few horror elements. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw more of this in the future, especially as shows like WandaVision, the movie, you know, Doctor Strange, Madness. That's a horror movie. A lot more horror is starting to become mainstream. I think you're gonna see that in Minecraft too. One of Minecraft's most disturbing secrets is hidden inside of this mountain. You see, if you've ever discovered a Minecraft igloo, you know that some of these igloos are a little less innocent than they appear because at the center, there's a giant secret trap door that leads to an underground laboratory. You're gonna find some things that maybe need to be questioned a little more than they have been. In fact, I don't hear anybody asking about why there are villagers and zombies being experimented on in this lab. Now, before I tell you about this theory, let's just observe what we have. The transformation chamber, the ingredients to make the transformation, potion making, now, what's going on down here, really? Why is this down here? We can assume two things. Number one, we can assume that this is run by a villager. The villager lives up here. He's running the experiment. So there is some sort of scientist villager confirmed. The theory is that Minecraft pillagers, because they look so similar to villagers, were actually created inside of these very labs. Is it possible that they were giving this villager the wrong medicine, turned him into this monster, but he was so strong, he managed to escape and break free? We've all seen the pillager outpost houses. Often there's iron golems trapped on the outside or alleys, innocent creatures for the most part. How would they have gotten the iron golems or the alleys in the first place? Maybe the pillagers collected them as they were leaving. Maybe they took them and put them in a cage like they once were. Maybe they're getting revenge. I'm gonna say it's all but guaranteed. Pillager outposts are literally designed to protect them from the villagers. You see the true evil people in Minecraft isn't the pillagers, but it's the ones that created them in the first place. The innocent villagers that constantly rip you off. Wither skeletons are dead players. Haven't you ever wondered what happens if you like die in the nether? This commenter's theory is that when you die in the nether fortress, you become a wither skeleton. Now there's a couple problems with this theory, but first let's explain the good parts. They hold stone weapons. They literally have weapons that are impossible to get here. And as far as I know, there's no way to get to the surface. So maybe they picked up the stone from players. What about players that actually do get their items back? You die here, you come back, your items are still here and there's no problem. But what about players who don't come back after they die? What if when you die in this world as a hardcore player, you become a wither skeleton to haunt other worlds, and the ones that you see here are just recent players that have died, which could explain why some of these seem so stupid and others seem so intelligent, because the farther along you are in the game, the more skill you have. This one runs in a straight line, very weakly hits, like right, he could have got more hits in. But some other wither skeletons seem a little more intelligent, like this one. It's possible that when you die in hardcore in the nether on a fortress, you will respawn as a wither skeleton. What exactly is bedrock protecting us from or sealing us from? Because you can get through bedrock in spectator mode and you don't die the second you leave it. So what exactly is Minecraft floating on? Now, some people think, well, obviously it's the void, right? This gassy substance down here that you can see is going to kill you. That's not true because the void is all the end is. And when you're in spectator mode, you can only get so far until you start taking damage from something unknown. Now, what it says is you fell out of the world. This is where things get extremely disturbing, and I'm gonna explain to you guys using some props. You see, this red block in the center represents Minecraft, and the Steve head represents you, the player. This glass represents the area where you die if you are to fall out of the world. But what if the void is actually a one-way glass? What if we're being observed by smarter people than us that literally watch you jump to the bottom and they kill you? because you almost expose who they are. Just change this Minecraft block with a blue earth block and suddenly it makes a lot of sense. What if you can't leave earth because we're being observed by aliens, just like we're observing Minecraft players and just like the Minecraft players are being observed by other Minecraft entities. What this means is each time you fall into the void and die, there's a kill switch that someone up there is pressing because they don't wanna be exposed. Many of you don't know this, but my real world experience actually comes in handy for this next myth because back before I was a YouTuber, I was an engineer and I worked with radiation. I worked with Geiger counters. Click, 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 click. All right, I did that stuff all the time. I know a lot about radiation, more than the average person. And that's why when someone commented that you can hear a Geiger counter in the basalt biome, it really caught my interest. And so I had to test it for myself. And there it is. That is the sound of a Geiger counter, a radioactive detecting device. They use this to determine if an area is safe to be or if the radiation will kill you. If there's radiation here, something had to have caused that radiation to come out. What if the nether had a mass eruption event? You see, the basalt could have been the center of this mass eruption event, and you, it would make sense. There's giant valleys through the basalt where the lava would have erupted from, and you can see that there's no life in the basalt biomes. It's all dead and destroyed. And of course, it would be less bad the farther out you go. 
Which might explain why as you journey away from basalt biomes, you start to find warped forests and crimson forests. These weird mutated forest biomes are starting to regrow. If you look at the soul sand and realize that there are actual trapped souls inside the sand, it makes even more sense that the nether used to actually be just like the overworld. Now, other theories say that maybe the basalt biome or the nether in general and the Geiger counter isn't from a natural disaster event, but from a man-made bomb. A man-made natural disaster that caused this to look this way. Now, personally, I don't think that's likely because I've never seen a bomb in Minecraft. Not that it couldn't happen. I think a mass volcano extinction event sounds more likely. 